the tiles are failing, um, our, our environment here in Wisconsin is a little bit harsher than Thailand. So uh, we're going through a uh, restoration project and that should be completed in 2023. If you wanna know more about this and you're really interested in it, um, there's a public information meeting on June 1st. It's virtual at six o'clock and you are welcome to join. Um, and I put a little QR code there if anyone wants to scan it and then, or I can, I'm happy to send Emily the link and she can send it out. The Bulls Conservatory has celebrated 30 years last year. So that was really exciting. It's our glass house filled with tropical plants. And uh, we have lots of orchids in there and a variety, we feature the orchid show in there. Uh, it's a great tropical paradise for a staycation in the winter. I love that photo of the conservatory in the winter. It's a great place to warm up and uh, feel kind of that tropical life uh, in the dead of winter. New greenhouses, we had a, a recent capital project which built new greenhouses for us. They're split into three spots, production, we have an orchid greenhouse and a tropical house where we put all those tropical plants from the outside gardens and we store them for the winter. And then we also, for production, plants for our plant sale, all sorts of uh, growing happens there. The holiday show, if you ever come to that, a lot, a lot of that we do our own growing as well. Education, has anyone ever taken a class at Ulbrick? So we have a strong education department. And one thing like all of us, like you have adapted here, we have virtual classes. Our last lecture is um, actually this week. Our own director of horticulture, Jeff Ebbing, is gonna talk. Um, that's a virtual um, offering. But we have a variety. You can see Sarah there. She's our youth and family programs coordinator. She's teaching virtually to school groups. Um, but then we, we're thankful to have back our tours and classes. Um, and we're now in the Frouchy Family Learning Center, which is great to have that space now open. And there's noises in the hall we haven't heard in a very long time. Anyone know what those are? People, yeah, especially little people. The um, kids are back on field trips. So it's wonderful to hear them running around and excited. And it's been great to have that space. Now the Schumacher Library is right in the lobby. There's a lot of great changes that are happening in the library. We have an online book catalog. We have a plant information desk. So if you're wondering about something, you can write in and they'll help answer your question. We have children's activities in the library um, and more. They got this uh, Braille um, uh, talking books right here. So we, we're trying to offer a variety of services um, for everybody. And then new, this is a brand new partnership, this little, it's, because not all the collections there yet, this little in the corner here, that is the um, Badger Bonsai Society. They have a book collection and it's now in our library. So um, it's accessible because before it was in the home of a member. And so now it's in our library so more people can access it. Um, that's just part of the collection. We're in the process of getting it all into the library. Tours, tours are back, so exciting. The tram's back. We have a brand new tram tour, a brand new tram. So we're excited to have trams back. Um, and then we have a lot of, um, there's garden strolls on Sunday and other tours available as well. Um, so it's great to have things kind of resume, resume to normal and welcome people back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With the trams, you just used to be able to appear and you might have to wait in line. Yep. Can you still do that? You can still do that. Um, but now there's, we have a tram circle, so you can actually have a seat and just chill and relax there until the tram comes around. Oh, good. Yep. And are there hours for that? Yes, it's, uh, I believe it's 10 to four, I believe is what the hours are for the tram. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Now we also have a bunch of special programs that we offer. Um, there's a lot of musical programming that we offer, whether it's in the conservatory or outside in the gardens. Um, anyone know what that bottom photo is there with the lights, what that's from? From Gleam. Gleam, yes, it's Gleam. Gleam's coming back. We had a record year last year with over 33,000 people coming out for Gleam. So we're happy to have that back. And then this, this photo right here on the right, with them pouring the hot iron. That's, what, what is that that's happening in the gardens? Yes, it does. It's our um, annual iron pour, which is a great way to, we made a bunch of scratch tiles of native plants and then they were 
um, poured and we're about to hang those in our lobby so uh, to fit our theme. But other things that are coming back, well, the Summer Concert Series is happening again this year. Summer Breeze is happening in June. Um, home Garden Tour is happening as well, and that's going to take place in Oregon. Sorry, I lived in Oregon, and you can't say Oregon. You have to say Oregon. Oregon, not Oregon. Sorry, so was catching myself. Uh, Blooming Butterflies is back. I know a lot of people have been asking and waiting for that. And then Gleam is coming back as well. Special exhibits. This is really exciting. Um, a lot of our special exhibits have returned. So anyone know what this one is with a nice fancy red car? What that's from? The Holiday Train Show, yep. Uh, the theme was Planes, Trains, and Automobiles this past year. And then the one on the right here, this big photo, um, that was from our spring floral show. The theme was um, Roy G. Biv's Rainbow Rooms and every room of your house is in a different color. So if you've ever wanted a red kitchen or an orange living room or a violet bedroom or a blue indigo uh, living room, it was pretty amazing. They, they, it was the creativity of our horticulture staff is unbelievable. Uh, we also orchid escape is back as well. And so that's a great way to spend February, come see all the orchids in our conservatory. And then um, this one right here in the bottom, this is happening right now, it's called Nature is Healing. And this is uh, cyanotypes. Um, and so there's images of plants on these cloths that are hanging from the trees and it's a temporary art exhibit that's up until June 19th. Volunteers, does anyone volunteer at the gardens or has anyone volunteered at the gardens? You have? A long time ago? Awesome. Well, volunteers are strong at the gardens. They're coming back. Um, I put the hours in there because it's kind of interesting. So 2019, we had over almost 27,000 hours. In 2021, we had 18,000 hours. Um, so volunteers are coming back. And volunteers do all sorts of things from helping with our school programs to helping with our propagation to this bottom photo here, they're cleaning out the insect um, hotels. So the little tunnels where the bees have laid their um, eggs, they're cleaning them out so we're prepared for the next season. So the bees have a place to, to nest for the year. Now orchid staff, Ulbrich staff, um, there's so many different departments and things that make us work. And so this gives you just a little rundown. Uh, we have people in development. Uh, we have people in our library. Um, people that work with our guests, um, obviously education. Private events are your weddings and your celebration of lives and your business meetings. Um, we have staff that run that. Of course, we have our horticulture staff. Um, we have staff that run our communications. If you're a member, you get our newsletter in the mail or our social media, our website. Exhibits and programs, that's all the special art stuff, the music um, and glean uh, facilities. Those are very Important staff, everyone's important, but our facilities really help us keep things running. Um, gift shop, if you haven't been to our gift shop in the last year, it's completely changed. We uh, kind of did a um, redevelopment of it. And so it's all fair trade now and local products. So it's pretty cool. So if you haven't been to our gift shop, stop on by. They are open till six o'clock as well. So, um, and then volunteers and interns, we have strong volunteer program. We have a new partnership with Madison College this year with our interns. We have two interns from Madison College on top of our other interns. And then members, is anyone a member here? All right, I love that you're raising your hand tall and proud, yeah, thank you. One of the best benefits of being a member is let's say I wanna to go to Morton Arboretum in Chicago. I take out my Ulbrich card and I say, I'm a member of Ulbrich and they're like, come on in for free. So that's the best benefit. Like I went to Atlanta Botanic Garden um, two weeks ago, and I think the admission was $25. Um, and I showed them my Ulbrich card and they said, come on in. So huge benefit, especially if you're traveling. Um, and then if you, you come to the conservatory as much as you want. Um, so it's, it's a great benefit. All right, so what benefit is Ulbrich to Madison? What do you guys think? And if you, Feel free to put in the chat for those of you watching at home. Yeah, what benefit does the garden bring to the community? Uh, it gives pretty flowers. It shows you what natural flowers can look like. 
Yeah. And I love all the statues and it's a peaceful place to walk. Awesome. Yep, definitely. Peaceful place to walk. There's art, there's flowers, you can be inspired. Anything else? What else do we do for the community? There's an educational benefit in classes, program. right? Yep, definitely takes classes. There's one right here. Um, I, we find that when we have company from out of town, out of the country, some um, that one of the first places we think of to visit with them and introduce to Ma Madison and the importance of greenery to the end. And we also had a young man who grew up in Madison, moved away and came back and he um, came out to our house to visit. And he, when he came, he said, I didn't remember that Madison had all these flowers, <laughs> you know, and um, people had made an effort to make their homes uh, kind of a show place. Yeah. You know, just really, that was a very interesting observation for me. We're showing off our Midwest plant diversity, right? Inspiring others to take it home. Definitely we're a place for people to visit, whether you're local or out of town. Yeah, and walk around our neighborhood and have our own tours. <laughs> it's amazing since we moved to that particular site we live at now, how many people have made an effort to um, make their grounds very appealing. That's great. Yeah, we definitely are there. Yeah. Good for heart and soul. I yes. like that. Yes. It cheers you when you need it. Yes, definitely. Yep. All right. Thank you. Thanks for your comments. Um, there we go. So exactly like you said, um, we're a tourism attraction, whether you're local or from out of town, people come from near and far to visit Old Brick Botanical Garden. So we bring people to town. Um, we're on track to reach our 2019 attendance, which was over 320,000. Um, I'm, we are going to meet that no problem this year. In 2021, we were at 291,000. So it's a lot of people. Um, my t colleagues in Texas, when I moved here, asked me, they're like, are you even open in the winter? They think that there's nothing to see. But if you've ever been to Oldbrook in the winter and you go to the outside gardens, you'll notice that our horticulturists are really talented at creating winter interest. And so they really make the gardens beautiful, whether there's flowers blooming or not. Um, the way that they place plants and the colors of branches and leaving dried, dried plant material, it's just beautiful any time of the year. So we're also award winning. I'm really happy and proud to say that this year we won the 2022 Garden Sustainability Award from the American Horticulture Society. We're one of two gardens to win this. Um, the other previous garden that won last year was North Carolina Botanical Garden. So being recognized by our peer gardens is amazing. And we're really proud and, and honored to receive this award. So you have an award winning garden here. I've heard from my colleagues in um, the public garden world that Ulbrich is, they compare us to Chanticleer. If you've ever been out in the Philadelphia area, go to Chanticleer, it's amazing. So when I've heard that from peers, whoa, I love that. That's, that's quite a pat on the back. It's really amazing. National recognition. So anyone know this gentleman here in the corner? That's Jeff Epping, our director of horticulture. Uh, Jeff Epping and his work with Gravel Gardens was featured in the New York Times this year. Um, and there's actually a podcast on it as well. Uh, so it's really awesome to see us receive that kind of recognition. Um, and Jeff, that's his home right there with Gravel Gardens featured in the, in the article. So it's really nice to see that um, and receive that recognition on a national level. And then just like you said, heart and soul benefits in nature. This um, diagram here is from Children and Nature Network. So this is all the benefits of nature for children, but it's very much for adults as well. Um, there's studies that say like just a 20 minute walk outside reduces your stress levels. Um, and so for kids, when they have more time outside and more unstructured play out, outside, there's better academic performance, enhanced intention when they're in, in the classroom, increased engagement and enthusiasm, um, improved behavior, baby ears are healthier, there's higher, um, healthier eyes and vitamin D levels, increased physical activity, and social emotional well being. Their collaborative play and cooperative play with children when they're outside is higher um, than when they're inside. So, 
lots of benefits for young and old um, from nature. Now, this is the famous corpse flower. It bloomed this year uh, just a couple weeks ago. Did anyone come to see it? It was, it was amazing. Um, it, this specific one, excuse me, bloomed 12 years ago. So it's been a while since it bloomed. Um, and that's one of the attractions why so many people came out to visit it. Uh, it stinks like a rotting corpse. Um, some people said terrible cheese. Some people said uh, a, a dumpster on a 90 degree day. Um, it, the comments were all over the place. We had over 2,400 people visit on the day that it was mainly in bloom. Um, in total, over 5,500 people came to visit. And I put some of these Instagram posts that were um, from the public because I think they're pretty um, interesting. Like uh, you can see that the people waited over two hours and then the couple on the right wa waited over four and a half hours um, to see it. But pretty cool once in a lifetime experience. They were so happy to do it. Um, I like, uh, we had people take off of work. Um, we had someone who came on Thursday, waited in line two hours and had to leave came back Friday, waited an, over an hour and had to leave, and then came back on Sunday and finally saw it. It was starting to close up at that point, but was able to see it. So we had children wanting to wait in line with their parents, and then we had parents who had their children because they wanted to see it. I mean, it was, it was amazing. It was, I, people made friends in line while they were waiting. So um, it was pretty amazing what one plant <laughs> can do. Uh, you might've seen on the news that, um, on this flower started to bloom the day a wedding was scheduled to happen in the conservatory. And it was May 4th, and so it was a Star Wars themed wedding. Um, and they were thrilled beyond belief to have this flower um, grace their wedding and create an aroma for the occasion. Um, and people asked, does it really stink? It's like, yeah, it does. So yeah, when there weren't as many people in there, it would kind of catch your breath. You're like, oh, what is that smell? Um, but it's pretty fantastic. It was wonderful to have it. And we were, um, I think the people that, we had people drive from Wausau, Green Bay, La Crosse to come see it. So it was crazy, but great. 67 inches, I believe, is what it reached. You know, I, I've never, um, we didn't measure the width. It's big. Yeah, it's very big. It's like, I don't know, probably like that, maybe. I don't know, three feet across, maybe? Two and a half, three feet? It was big. How many of these do you have? We have four corpse flowers. Um, but this is, yeah, so they don't obviously all bloom at the same time. And what was really great is we had one in leaf form. So they either shoot up a leaf or they um, bloom. And so, but they'll shoot up a leaf and that, that's how they gain the energy to bloom eventually. So this one took 12 years to do it. And so we had one in leaf form right next to the one that was blooming. And if you really want to dig into like the life cycle of a corpse flower, Chicago Botanic Garden has a fantastic website with all sorts of information um, on, their, on their website. They had a great life cycle that they let us use too. So definitely check out. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Probably reproductive organ. The the um, they're actually down here. You can't see it. They're down in yeah. there is where the um, male and female parts are, um, right down in here. So when it was like this, there were flies flying around, and then we'd see them kind of like go down. And so it's pollinated by flies and carrion beetles. And it's the spadix. I think this top part is the spadix. I'm learning it. This is my first corpse flower for me, especially coming from a native plant garden. Plants like this are very uh, different to <laughs> what I'm used to. Tanya, is this an opportunity to grow baby corpse flowers? Or are we no, we didn't that? pollinate it. No. Mm -mm. We have four of them from UW. And so they, we had one bloom during the pandemic when we were closed. Um, but we put, um, we tried to make a, a webcam for it and it actually aborted. It never went to full bloom. And then the last one that bloomed was 2018. So. I mean, they happen between the four of them. They happen every now and then, but yeah. 
It either looks like a pot of soil, so this pot right here, that'll be nothing but soil, so the, the corum is down below, and that's it'll just rest for a while, and then it'll shoot up a leaf. And so the one behind it is similar, it's not the same one, but you see that, that this is one leaf coming up right here. It'll have one of those, and it's huge. Um, but a lot of the time of the year, it's just an em it's just a pot of soil with nothing coming up above the soil. So when I told our conservatory curator, I was like, "It's blooming!" He was like, Ugh. "Yeah," because he's the one watering that pot of soil over and over, and so it's a lot of maintenance and care, right? <laughs> Wait twelve years for it to bloom. All right. So what's ahead for over gardens? What's ahead? It's exciting. Lots of good stuff. We we see we received um, funds from the American Rescue Plan Act through the Wisconsin Department of Tourism. So the Oberg Botanical Society applied, and we received a grant of 145,000 for accessibility upgrades. So our exit turnstile currently is not accessible for wheelchair and like strollers. It makes it very challenging to leave, and so we're getting an upgraded turnstile that will accommodate. Um, more forms of um, more people and make it easier to exit the gardens. Now, this might be hard to tell here, but these are the paths in the conservatory. They're uneven um, after 30 years of being in there. And so they've kind of heaved up in the middle. And so they've actually, it's been done. They've been um, uh, taken out and put back in and now they are 100% flat. So if you're, it just makes it easier to walk around. You're no longer kind of on an angle. Um, so it's, that was a, um, with funds from this grant, we were able to do this. And so we're going to make some upgrades to the outdoor pass as well. So it makes it smoother and easier to walk around. And then we're also getting a shade structure for our tram circle. So if you're waiting for the tram, uh, you have shade that you can sit under. Um, so we're really excited to be one of the Wisconsin groups that received this funding to improve the gardens. And then bigger picture, strategic planning. So coming up, we are entering a strategic planning phase. We're in the process of picking our consultant that's gonna help with this. And all these things are gonna go into this plan. Um, Imagine Madison, we're part of the city of Madison Parks Division. So we are definitely gonna be following um, guidelines from the city of Madison. Uh, we are going to look at diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility. That's the DEIA. We're gonna look at professional standards for botanic gardens, make sure we're meeting those. Uh, we're going to look at the Climate Toolkit. Climate Toolkit is standards for museums um, to address for climate change. So we want to be better and be a leader for museums. Um, we're a museum. We have a living collections. Our collections are all plants. And so we're hoping to address how we can be better as a museum to address climate change. And then our public uh, professional organization has a sustainability index. We're going to follow that as well to improve the, um, the standards by which we do our work. And so that's coming up. And then we'll have stakeholder input. So we are looking for input from our stakeholders that can help us um, be the garden that you all would like us to be. Um, you know, well, how are we meeting your needs currently? How are we not? What do you envision would be a growth for us? So that's going to happen. Um, we hope to have the plan completed by early 2023. So it's very exciting for us. And opportunities for you all, um, you can come visit the gardens, uh, whether you go to the Outdoor Gardens or Bulls Conservatory, you can shop in our lovely gift shop. You can learn and be inspired through classes, through programs, through concerts, just walking around the garden. You can buy plants through our plant sales to put in your own gardens. You can volunteer if you would like. We have lots of volunteer opportunities. And you can host a wedding, you can host a meeting, you can host baby showers. We have all kinds of events that are hosted at the gardens. Um, we've even been doing a lot of celebration of life. Uh, a lot of people pick Ulbrich to um, celebrate their, their, final, um, their final, final days, I guess. Uh, so it's, Ulbrich has a special meaning to a lot of people. And so there's lots of ways that you can interact with us. And with that, thank you and if there's any questions and those of you online thank you for listening as well feel free to write questions in the chat as well any questions?
questions? First, thank you very much for having Ulbrich part of our community. The, <clears throat> I think the notion of public garden is very important. We, as you probably know, we have demonstration gardens, which is kind of in that same vein to show what can be done. Um, but what I wanted to share was um, just a story of gardening experience. The, during that hot spell, the super hot, all of my spring flowers fried. They burned up. Yep. And last night I was reading <clears throat> in National Geographic that that same thing is happening to trees all over the world. And they're becoming less able to function and then more vulnerable to insects and diseases. But it was, I thought what's so interesting is I'm seeing these burned up flowers. And it's a way of me learning a bigger truth that I, I mean, they were just burned up flowers. I have to trim them because they look like ash. <laughs> yep, I missed it. I was actually in Atlanta during it for a conference and I came back and I was like, whoa, the trees have leaves. Like they didn't have leaves when I left. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, the blooms were very short for the spring. Um, I survived the snowstorm in Texas. You probably have heard that February of 2021. Um, that was really interesting to go through that. Uh, there were a lot of plants, a lot of trees in the garden that didn't make it. Um, They're at the Northern range. Um, and they didn't make it. And so uh, the garden had to cut down quite a few trees, but all the plants that were under that snow cover stayed insulated. And so there were a banner year for a lot of spring wildflowers after that. It was interesting to see how nature responded after that, that harsh winter storm that Texas had. We call that the snow blanket. Yeah, exactly, yep. Any other questions? Membership is really great um, because you don't hesitate to come out uh, for just a short time. Um, that's uh, really great. And we were just recently down at the St. Louis Botanical Garden. And again, that was so nice because we could go there and stay as long as we wanted. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it is a definitely a benefit. And if you get um, discounts in our gift shop, if you have a membership as well, and then discounts to our classes as well. So there's lots of different benefits to being a member. Well, I was just wondering uh, what relationship, if any, there is between Ulbrich and the Green Bay Botanical Garden, which has really developed it a it's lot. Fantastic, isn't it? Yeah, it's a I, great garden. So is there any? We, um, I know our staff have done field trips there. We communicate with our colleagues there and, and learn from each other. Mm -hmm. In fact, I was just in contact with their education director um, and she had some resources that we haven't developed here at our garden. So public gardens is a very sharing world and mm -hmm. people, other gardens do share. Um, and so, yeah, we definitely keep in contact with our colleagues there and, and share and, and just talk to like, yeah. you know, how do you do this? How do you do that? Yeah. If you haven't been to that garden, it's fantastic. Kenny, I just, um, six months in, is there what what surprised you um, about coming into this this role? I think corpse flower was a, was an event. Um, staff told me it was going to be um, a big event, but it was beyond even staff. They're like, "Whoa, we've never seen anything like that before." Um, and I think just the generosity and kindness of people as they're waiting in line four and a half hours. That's a long time. And like by the time they got up to pay, people were paying for each other. They were sharing food. I mean, just kind of the humanity and, and niceness all for like, what, 30 seconds to see a flower and smell it. Um, that was pretty amazing and, and neat to see. Um, and I think the other thing is just the, um, the talents of staff. They're so varied. Some of them are very easy to see when you come to our floral shows. Just like, how, how do they do that?
Burkett show this year was really great. We loved it. Yeah. It, so the facility team worked with the conservatory team to weld these arches and then kind of engineer them So because they were filled with plants, right? So that's heavy. And then they were watered every day. That's more weight. And so just to create the minds, like to figure that out and the or conservatory staff going to the facilities team and saying, hey, we want to do this. And they're like, we can make that happen. And they, they did it. It was, it was really neat to see that all come together. Any other questions? Anyone online? Okay. All right. Well, thank you. And I'm really excited that you all are having service outside today because I think uh, it's the benefits of nature and being outside, I think, are, are tremendous. Um, and so I think that's really cool that you all do that. And I, well, it's a beautiful day, so enjoy. All right, thank you. Thanks. Thank you, everyone online.